Welcome to Dropping In, a podcast of storytelling and interviews with your host, Winter Olympian Mercedes Nickel. Thank you so much for dropping in today. This is the beginning of series four on Dropping In, where I will be chatting with Team Canada athletes going to the Tokyo Games. Now, I have opted to have a co-host as I'm a Winter Olympian. I thought it might be helpful to have an, a Summer Olympian along the ride with us asking other questions. So let me introduce the sport and guest that we will be dropping in with, who will be my co-host throughout this 10-episode series. The sport that she does has many different strokes, and the stroke that she did at the Olympics could be one of the oldest of them all. It's very popular in recreational swimming. It can be done at low speeds with your head out of the water most of the time. And it's one of the hardest strokes to teach due to the timing and coordination of the arms and legs. I'm not going to get into the details of how that works, but you kind of look like a frog while you're doing the brush stroke. Okay, the guest that we're dropping in with is going to be my co-host, so you're going to get used to her face. She's an Olympian, and she is founder and president of Head to Head, a company that promotes mental resilience and physical wellness through Olympian-led mentorship programs that teach healthy habits and inspire confidence, something we all need. She was on the Canadian National, National Senior Swim Team for nine years, winning a silver medal at the Pan Am Games. She's a recipient of the Queen Jubilee Medal. She's a two-time Canadian Female Omega Swimmer of the Year, two-time BC Female Swimmer of the Year, record holder of the 200-meter breaststroke for the Canadian Inter-University Sport. She represented Team Canada at the 2012 London Games and the 2016 Rio Games doing the 200-meter breaststroke. She was named captain of the Rio Games in 2016 of the swim team, along with Ryan Cochran. She's got a Bachelor's of Kinesiology and a Master's of Management in Innovation and Entrepreneurship. You'll be seeing a lot more of her on this series of Dropping In. This daughter, sister, friend, Olympian, award winner, world champion, medalist, Pan Am's Games medalist, is going to be Dropping In Series 4 co-host. Let's get to know... Martha McCabe. Martha McCabe, are you ready to drop in on this episode and then be my co-host for the rest of the series? Oh yeah, this is a big drop in. I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. uh, You might find out that our rapid fires are never rapid and it's just what it is, what it is. So I'll uh, start with number one. Okay. You have not seen these at all. So this is fun for me. (laughs) You've done a million speaking engagements um, and you own your own company that offers speaking engagements. Do you still get butterflies? Ooh, that's a good question. For some, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If it's a, like I do a lot or my business does a lot with swim clubs and and I'm like really familiar with so many of the clubs across the country and the coaches and so those I don't get so like nervous or I guess pumped up for, but certain ones I definitely do. And I find the ones that make me the most kind of nervous or where I get those butterflies are ones where it's like, if like, for example, maybe I was doing my, when I was doing my master's, like speaking to my, my peers, my like mm-hmm. people who are doing the course with me, th- those are the ones, or even like, you've been in a session when I led like an Olympian training. Yeah. Yeah, that like I get I get butterflies for those because it's like your peers, right? And so you're like, oh man, this is so silly. Like you guys can do this too, but so yeah, but you're telling us what to do. We need you. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't know if you do, but <laughs> <laughs> I do. I need you. <laughs> okay, number two coming up on five years retired. Is that right? Yep. Hey. Um, when was the last time you put on? I know I'm not going to say this right. A swim cap. And you really went for a, a breast stroke. A breast stroke. <laughs> well, like when I go swimming, I don't really just swim breast stroke. In fact, it's pretty hard on your knees. So now if I swim, I, I mostly am doing freestyle, like front crawl. It's hard on but your knees? Oh, with the frog kicky? Bre- exactly. The frog kicky. You really twist your knees out. It's pretty weird. It's not a normal 
motion right. that your body's doing. I'm a um, brush stroker. Yeah. <laughs> Never <forget> Perfect. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but before the pandemic, I was swimming, like, I'd go, like, once every three weeks or something, just for fun, like. With your cap so on and, like, just. Yeah, with my cap on. Okay, so do you think you could go to the Olympics this summer? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No chance. no chance. Okay, well, I'm sure there's a chance. <laughs> Um, I do want to get in later how, um, swimmers qualify. So remind me about that. Okay. I'll try. Yeah. Um, number three, cottage life or mountain life? Oh man, come on. You can't, you can't do me like that. I know because I love your cottage. Um, <laughs> that is like, literally, I literally won't be able to give you an answer. Cause I grew up cottage was my whole summers. As soon as school ended to when I got back to school all through no matter what sports I was doing, I just ditched everything and went and lived up at the cottage. So like, yes. that was my childhood, right? Yeah. But now I'm living in the mountains and I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, it's, different. I can't give you an answer. I know. Maybe That's fair. You don't have to. I just, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was a dick question anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to choose. I'm like dreaming of your cottage and I live in Whistler. exactly it's kind of what it does yeah (laughs) totally okay so um you live in the mountains now you live in Canmore do you ski or snowboard I ski if you can call it that I just fool around out there I'm no I'm no expert that's for sure (laughs) but you also cross-country ski too right I do love doing that it's fun but again not an expert whatsoever I just go out there and pump around (laughs) I am not good at it either I have cross-country and class and and skate skis and yeah it's just a hoot every time I go out. It's so fun. Like I only have ever done uh, classic. Okay. And I think I'd love skate, but I'm like actually avoiding it because I don't want to purchase a whole new set of equipment. Yeah. Living in the mountains is expensive. I'll give you that because of all the equipment you want to buy, right? Yeah. yeah. That part of it's crazy. Don't worry. I have rollerblades too. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. They'll be coming out soon. Don't Good. Worry. Like I saw someone the other day and I was like, Me yeah, too. It's done. <laughs> They always catch my eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number. Oh, number five. What was the most memorable takeaway from your Olympic experience? Oh, that's tough. Um, I'm going to maybe give you two here. Yeah. That's because good. one's from London and one's from Rio. <laughs> two Olympics, you get two choices. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is that so, who you get for? Exactly. I was going to say other people's lists are a little longer there. I know. Um, well, the, one of the coolest things in London was I, like my goal was to podium at those games and, and swimming after you make it through the heats, you go to the semifinals and then through the final. So I made it through all the way to the final. So top eight. Um, so at that point, like I'd done everything I could super pumped to yeah. just be in that final. Um, but obviously my goal was to be on the podium. And I remember just vividly, obviously remember the race itself. Like I remember the halfway mark, like things I said to myself and then finishing, I, I touched the wall. Um, I looked up at the scoreboard and I was fifth. So missed that podium, which was a bummer, but I like turned and like leaned over the lane rope and just looked up into the audience. And mm-hmm. the first person I saw, obviously like, because she stood out, but it was my mom and she was like yes. cheering and like, it, it was just such an incredible experience, like touching the wall at the final, in the final at the Olympic games, looking up and like seeing her, right? Because that was incredible. So that, that one stands out. Yes. Um, and the story of just like how she got that ticket was even a cool one too, because she was pretty low down, which was hard, hard to do, obviously. And yeah. then yeah. one big one that stands out from Rio is just when Penny Alexiak won gold, um, obviously, that was just so cool. Like she was just, we, we literally called her child. Right. (laughs) And so the fact that she went in there and just like crushed world record holders and all one gold for Canada was, it was so fun to just be part of that team. And that whole, the whole swim team was just swimming so fast. And it was really cool. So wow. So rad. So did your parents go to both games? Yeah, they did. They did. That's so nice. And and so you you saw your mom. Did you know before you jumped in the water where she was? No, 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 not at all. That was That's just why... like random that you saw yeah. her. <gasps> That's family intuition. Yeah, it is. And and part of it was actually the CEO at 
of Bell at the time. Um, oh man, I'm blanking on his name right now. Oh, is a uh, some something Cope. His last name's Cope. George Cope. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so he and he actually um, we have a family connection to him. Yeah. And he and his daughter had really good tickets, and okay. because of Bell, right? Yeah. Where my parents had like freaking tickets so That's high great. up. And they couldn't. Sounds about right. Yeah. And, and so, but he ended up giving her that ticket. Yeah. And so, like, she got to come right down. And, like, so that whole story was just so cool. Um, and, like, man, that was, yeah, it was such an awesome opportunity for me to, like, look over right in that moment and see my mom and be like, oh, man, that's crazy. So, that's and I so remember cool. I just looked at her and I was kind of like, mm, like, you know, it's yeah. done, whatever, yeah. that, there it is. So, uh, it was seventh, fifth, 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 those games, yeah. That's bad on me. Sorry. Fifth. No, I don't. I like how you're like, mm, fifth. fifth. I don't in the expect world. you to know everybody's place. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? I want to. Um, okay. Number seven. Is there any sport that you would like to try that you haven't? Ooh, that's tough. Cause I've, I am like obsessed with sports and I try so many sports cause I just love them. Yeah. So one that I haven't yet tried. There, the answer is for sure yes. Maybe I just don't even know what that is yet. Um, skateboarding, so painful, so painful. I don't think I could try that. I'd fall too much. It would hurt. I know it would hurt so. I much. think I'd want to try. Um, I don't know. Well, we were talking about cross country skiing. I've never tried skate skiing. Skate skiing. Oh, Maybe you daredevil, cool. you. Well, that's a for sure. I know. I live on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think of like. Do you rock climb? I've, I used to like, just go to the like bouldering gym again, just super like recreational for fun. That okay. stuff's fun. I haven't yeah. been outside. I don't know. If, I'm like, not a, I'm not a, I get my adrenaline in sport from like doing really hard or like really long things, oh, not gross. from like dropping off a cliff. That's why you're my co-host. We're opposite. Exactly. Yeah, we are. <laughs> okay. Um, random number seven movies or book Zzz. movies or books <laughs> usually I like would say pretty much neither which is so crazy but I just like you're always on the go I'm just a mover but during the pandemic I've read more books than like ever before yeah and it's been good like it's good for me to just I, I enjoy them now so to just it, sometimes it's hard unless you're hooked into one then you're like, yeah you don't really want to go anywhere yeah, when you find a topic or like, yeah, a few, there, I've read a few good ones for sure. Nice. nice. Any that you can name off the top of your head? I read one. It's called American Dirt. Have you heard of it? No. It's pretty, it's really intense. Um, American, it's American. It has American in the world. It's yeah, going to be really intense. intense. Um, yeah, that's a really good one off the okay. top of my head. Cool. I'm going to look into that one. Um, <clears throat> number eight. Dun, dun, dun. Are you nervous to be my co-host? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. I feel like you're like the most chill person ever. It's very easy to co-host with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I'm well, excited. Hope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. Um, number nine, is there something you think you might learn more about co-hosting on Dropping In that you may not have known about? Yeah, definitely. I think there's so many... Um, like little pieces of all these different Olympic sports that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. And I just think anytime you have a conversation with a high level athlete, you're going to learn something like yeah. every athlete has their own little story and their own little quirks and reasons they do things and ways they do things like, yeah, I'm pumped to learn all those things. I know me too, especially summer athletes. I find them very <laughs> different and appreciate each and every one of them. Don't get me wrong. Um, uh, but I, I, yeah, I'm so excited to learn about the other sports and cause I haven't watched the summer Olympics really before that I can remember. So I feel like yeah. my mind's going to be blown and there's so many new sports in this That's games it. as well. So it's going to be wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's just so many sports, right? It's a huge yeah. game. Like uh, when we go to the summer Olympics, like you're you don't know most of the Canadian team it's massive right like yeah. you you get to know some people for sure but my from my understanding and you can speak to this like 
the the winter olympics you guys kind of get to know most of the team is that right yeah yeah because we're only like we're like 200 people 200 athletes deep and maybe sometimes two villages sometimes three villages but like you pop down and and you're pretty tight family at least in your village where you're at like one monstrous village it's huge yeah i mean there's a few little satellite villages sometimes for like the rowers or whatever but but usually they they come into the village after as well but yeah, it's just a massive game. It's like, think of all the teams, like I know. a basketball team, a softball team, a, like and each has like 20, 30, even the swim team is a huge team, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there's probably 30 of us or so. Wow. Like, so we're huge when we come in. Then the athletics, like track and field guys come in. That's a huge team. Like, yeah. It Wild. is huge. Yeah. I, I think I, I should get the stats out on like how many, there's probably, I feel like there's like, 20 something winter sports and then like I don't know how many I, I don't want to like say it but a I lot know. more I think so <laughs> too. yeah you okay know this. you went to Olympic school in Greece <clears throat> I did I know I sh- <laughs> this is where I get these random facts from yeah like yeah. like how, how much gold is actually in the gold medal I'll what's bring the that answer up. to that no, oh, I, I'd have to, I have to look it up. <laughs> okay, it's not as much as you think it is yeah <laughs> the amount of times like kids ask that question whenever I'm speaking yeah. like how much bronze and how much silver much? I'm like oh I have no idea like I have to look I guess and I never look so I'm just like, terrible <laughs> I'll bring that up in the YouTube video um for yeah. when you watch oh I've popped out yeah I'll put that if you guys are watching the YouTube video it'll it'll pop up and show you oh, how good. much that is <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay number 10 this will be correct me if I'm wrong because Rio was 2016 and these are 2020 and the games are four years apart slash this time five years. This will be your first games after retirement. Is there anything weird going through your head? Like, I wish I was going, I wish I was there. I should still be competing. Oh, definitely shouldn't be competing. Okay. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. I, I like was really ready to retire. Like mm-hmm. I, I pushed my career as long as I could have for sure I was ready to be done so that's that's that um I actually am on the mission team going to Tokyo oh you're going so like hopefully let's see how it all plays out but as of right now um because my role was supposed to be a friends and family thing I was going to help like yeah you know all the all the parents and families like manage Tokyo but that's not happening right so now I'm supposed to be going as like a, an athlete concierge. So like be in yes. the village, help the athletes and, you know, with their, you know, their toilets. I need it's, plunging. I gotta get up actually, there and get plunging. <laughs> it's for the inside scoop. The athlete concierge is like my rock when I'm at the Olympics <laughs> or like the ones um, <clears throat> in the in the lounge with the athletes. Yeah, the mentors. So, <clears throat> so if you're a Canadian athlete, the Canadian Olympic committee goes above and beyond to help the athletes at the games. And they make these, I don't know if they're going to happen at the Tokyo games because the athletes are going in and straight out. Mm -hmm. But at previous games, they had an athlete's lounge with mentors who were past Olympians, excuse me. And they've been through it. They've done it. So you like can just talk to them and you cry on their shoulder because it's an emotional roller coaster. Um, so it's always good to have people that have been in that position there before to help you through any of the ups and downs, or if you're just like need a friend. So that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. This, this year will be, yeah, totally different because of COVID and yeah. Like, I, yeah, I like, like you said, like, I don't think there's going to be an athlete lounge, meaning there's probably not athlete mentors. I don't know that for sure though. Yeah. Um, but it'll be crazy. Cause like, I, I think my guess is like, who knows, this could all change tomorrow, but like, we'll be in the village and like, we're not gonna be able to leave the village would be my guess, right? Like we're going to be yeah. quite a bubble. So like, it could be wild after like four weeks. In there, you know, be like, get me out of this yeah, village. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to touch on that more, but I did bring in a bonus question because this is a hot topic in the news right now. <laughs> it has to do with the get up for closing ceremonies. 
I want to know what your thoughts and feelings on the Tokyo closing ceremonies jacket for Team Canada is. So is this the jean jacket? The jean jacket with the spray paint on the back. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me preface this with the fact that you shouldn't be asking me this question. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why? I, because I have like no, I'm not a fashionista. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, but you're an Olympian and you would have like potentially like, had you gone you've already worn a jean jacket at the game yeah that's the thing in london we had a jean jacket was that so opening like, or closing it was closing in london so like i've literally worn a jean jacket marched out as team canada and like we didn't really think much of it we we're just like this is hilarious and we yeah. went with it and that's kind of like how i feel about this jacket like it's kind of goofy but like whatever you're at the I olympics have fun it. and go yeah like uh, like i did a poll on dropping in on like you do you either love it or do you hate it yeah and it was right pretty much right down the middle and I'm not yeah. gonna name names because there were a bunch of Olympians that answered <laughs> and it's like down down the middle as to who likes it and who hates it and I'm like is this just what news is now because we've got nothing else to go on I know We're exactly talking about a closing ceremonies jacket which isn't meant to be official by any means because you all like yeah. Obviously, I've been to four games, but I didn't know this when I went first went is like the opening ceremonies you're with your team and you walk mm -hmm. in together and that's very official. The closing ceremonies is more like a celebration for the athletes. It's relaxed and you yeah. all walk in together. You're not walking in with your own country. Yeah. And then it's more about what's where the next games are going to be. Exactly. Not that you know anything that's happening when you're an athlete when you're on the floor because you're just like cool pretty bird Ooh, I know <laughs> you're you are part of the show so speakers are not set up for you to hear no. so it's just like a bunch of chaos and you're like oh my gosh yeah. you're yeah. like where's CBC where's the announcers what the heck yeah. is happening here <laughs> exactly yeah so. I mean like I say I mean I just I wouldn't have if I was an athlete I wouldn't have like thought twice but I just throw it on and be like pumped to be at the closing ceremonies yeah I will say I actually read an article the other day I think it was a Toronto Star article by mm -hmm. Cathal Kelly who who tends to write like sometimes he pushes it a bit like he likes to be a little controversial yeah. and he was doing exactly that with this jean jacket and like I started reading and I was like this is so ridiculous and like reading reading and I like ended up reading the whole article and his point at like halfway through is kind of like did you read this far and have you told someone about this because like basically you've proved my point that like we're this jacket is ridiculous and we're like writing articles on it I was like oh man I fell into the trap like this is so silly and here we are talking about it again I know so. I know I had to I can't believe it's such I a know. like hot topic because then the um Americans closing ceremonies jacket came out and it's like kind of like a 90s windbreaker white windbreaker top okay I haven't and seen they're that. they're like this is terrible I'm like oh we always have terrible kits let's get real <laughs> yeah anyway. it's so funny <laughs> all right we did the rapid fire that's never rapid I do want to talk about how how the swimmers qualify mm -hmm. for the Olympics because every sport that qualifies qualifies different yeah and luckily the Canadian Olympic Committee has a page where you can go and find out who's qualified um I don't know that it goes into the, like how they qualified but some people are qualified, some people aren't. Let's talk about the swimmers and are they qualified, are they not, and how do they qualify? So swimming's a wild qualification. You'll hear the best swimmers in the world, like Michael Phelps has said this before, the Olympic trials are more stressful than the Olympic games themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is in swimming because you have one chance to qualify. You could swim, you have to swim a heat swim, qualify for the final, it's a national championships. In the final, you have to hit a time standard and swim a, is come uh, place first or second. So you could hypothetically, and I've seen this happen to the Americans before, you could swim a world record in your heat swim in the morning, a world record, okay, fastest ever in the world. And then in the final, you could come third and still not go. whatever, and then you're not going. So like it, all that matters is your final swim in the, in the trials. So it's like, obviously just like super high pressure. And so this year it's even crazier for the swimmers, obviously because of COVID, like mm -hmm. the trials is it's been pushed back 
multiple times now. The Swimming Canada is doing their best to, to run the meet at all because it's so limited by how many swimmers can even go now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like really complicated now. What they've done in order to alleviate some of the pressure for our very top swimmers, so like our top seven or eight swimmers, is they've, they've already selected them without having them swim at trials. Um, oh. So those top seven, eight swimmers were our top um, placed swimmers at the last world championships okay, so they were in the been, finals which would have been a year ago which would have been in 20 the summer of 2019 right yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so they all these swimmers were in the final at in certain events and they were our top canadians in those finals so there's like seven of them selected which i think is kind of wise because now those athletes so the penny alexiak kylie mass marcus thormeyer sydney pickram those guys maggie mcneil those ones can now have focus. a better, yeah, a relief and focus on the games instead, yeah. right? So it makes sense, but it's just so brutal for all these other swimmers and all athletes really. But yeah. It's down to the wire and having that extra year, I think we'll find is like, not just physical, it's more mental for them to go through. Cause I, like when I heard it was going to be a year off, I was just like, oh, people's plans. They wanted to yeah. like retire and another year. I know. You don't think four years I, is enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly like can't imagine like if you're ready to retire and beyond that, a lot of athletes have planned to like have families and stuff, right? They're like, okay, I'm going to like have a baby right after the end. That's a common thing that like, I don't think the average person thinks about right. like athletes do that. They plan like right after the games, I'm doing this, this, this. And like, Sweet. and like to have that all of a sudden just be like, Phew, oh man, that's hard. It's They're so mentally challenging. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hey, I can't wait to talk to them and hear what, <laughs> if we even get that far. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, is there yeah. anyone that you're excited to chat to, like maybe a new sport um, that you've never talked to before? Well, I mean, skateboarding is making its first appearance in mm -hmm. Tokyo, right? So yeah. that's a different sport um, altogether for me. Like I know nothing about that sport. And I know for you, it's like similar, right? There's similarities, but for me, it's like a whole other world. So yeah. So that'll be cool. Awesome. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there'll be other surprises along the way that I didn't even think about. I know. I got to see who we're going to get on the roster. It's going to be a surprise yeah. for everyone, maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, no, fun. Any, any, um, any insight into being a co-host? Any questions that you want asked? <laughs> questions that I want asked? What do you mean? Like when, when we're interviewing someone, is there anything that you're like, oh. must ask? No, I think your questions are great. You just, I just want to get to know these people. It's fun to hear stories, right? Like yeah. athletes have hilarious stories or like, yeah. What's their favorite memories from games, that kind of stuff. It's fun. And then like, it's always cool to hear about even just their training and, and even like qualifying, like you were saying, like, yeah, it's so, so different for every sport. And it's so hard. And that's the thing. Like <clears throat> for me, that's what I remember from the Olympics is just qualifying being the biggest weight on your shoulder. Yeah. And so a lot of the athletes that we probably do talk to might already be qualified and some might not be qualified. Mm -hmm. So that's always the, like, it's kind yeah. of like asking someone, Oh, how's your boyfriend or how's your girlfriend? <laughs> and they're like, mm, we broke up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, are you qualified yet? Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. It, but I think athletes are used to it too. Like it's the most calm. Like I, I find, well, at least when I was swimming, like so many people would just be like, Oh, this, this summer when you're in Rio. And I was like, well, I don't even know if I'm going yet. Right. Like, and you're always like, if I go, if I go like, <laughs> cause you don't know. So. It's so true. So how did the qualifying process go for you for Rio? It would have been the same. So like we had that one swim meet, the Olympic trials. Yeah. And, um, but like what was going through your head when oh. like you were going through the, the qualifiers and then you were into the finals. Yeah. Were you like, I need to freaking breaststroke, breaststroke. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. That was my whole strategy. Just breaststroke, breaststroke. <laughs> just keep swimming. Just yeah. keep swimming. 
Honestly, I actually have a funny memory from the uh, Rio 2016 Olympic trials, because at that point, I've been on the national team for almost a decade, okay? Mm -hmm. And, like, I was 26 years old, 27 years old. Like, I was ready to move on. I wanted to go to the games, obviously, but, like, I wanted to retire after them, and I knew that. And so, like, that whole year, everything was like, okay, for the last time, I'm going to go to my training camp. For the last time, I'm going to be doing this, right? Like, I was kind of like, which was good because I was like really grateful for everything. I was like, okay, like this is a really hard practice, but like it's my last time to so, like, like, let's go, you know, like I was, yeah. it motivated me. But at those trials, I have a vivid memory. It was actually before the prelims of like sitting by the pool and like, you know, you always get nervous for your races. Um, and I was sitting there, I was nervous and I just started to feel so nervous. And I was like, oh my God, like I am never doing this again, never. <laughs> Because like, I do not want to feel this way. Like I was so nervous and I was like, I don't want this anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm done with this. So wild. Oh so, man, that's a good but one. But yeah, I mean, that's what makes it so sweet when you do succeed, right? Is yeah. those challenges. It's, it's so many ups and downs being an athlete that people don't ever see. They really just see you in the moment. And yeah. actually it's funny, we did a, did I ever tell you this? We did. I didn't choose to do this, but it happened. Um, a camera crew followed us around before 2010. No, and I didn't know there was a show, there was a show called Over the Bolts. Everyone, it was like right when reality TV shows kind of became a thing. Yeah. And we had our own reality TV show that I forget about all the time. That's amazing. <laughs> And I just, I, I, I've never really watched the whole thing. And I just remember the filmer, he like took off the red button to know when he was, you were, when he was filming and it was, we were at world championships one time and, and for snowboarding, I'm not sure if it's the same for swimming, uh, government funding is attached to world championships and you have to do well. And I did not do well. And I was just like crying to my teammates being like, I suck. And then I saw the camera guy there with his camera and I was like, oh God, they're That's really so capturing ridiculous. like the ups yeah. and downs. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But well, truthfully, I think, I mean, maybe it was just my career, but I feel like there's actually more downs than ups, yeah. right? Like that's what sport is. Like you, you're just battling for so, you're battling so hard for these tiny things that might happen and these yeah. little wins that could come. And like, so when they do happen, it's like, you need to celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it might not come again for a while. So true. Um, let's talk about head to head a little bit because I love what you're doing and um, it's just so cool. I got to talk to some kids the other day and kind of share my story on the ups and downs exactly of, yeah. of being an athlete and mentoring them a little bit. So give us, give head to head a little shout out. Yeah. So basically kind of like what we were talking about th through any athlete's careers, there's just potentially more downs and ups. And mm -hmm. I found in my career you know, I had really supportive parents and coaches, um, but I actually benefited so much from or older athletes who just mentored me. Yeah. And so because of that affecting my life and, and my career so much, as soon as I retired from swimming, I set out across on a cross country tour, which, which basically I drove from Victoria, BC, all the way to St. John's, Newfoundland, and just gave as many little talks as I could, ran certain clinics, was in schools, was working with corporate groups and just trying to share my story and like little strategies I use to manage challenges and to be as resilient as I possibly could. And the feedback from that cross country tour was so positive that that was kind of the birth of head to head. It was like, okay, that was, that was an amazing experience for me to transition out of my swim career. Yeah. Now, how can I make this um, like a, a business, but also provide the opportunity for other Olympians to be doing this so that we're reaching more kids and more Olympians and national team athletes are involved too, because it is, you learn about yourself, the more you share your story too. Right. Yeah. So it was just such a win-win and yeah, now we've been running for like uh, almost five years here now. And um, yeah, I've had like almost 50 different Olympians from all sorts of different sports involved. And yeah, it's just, it's so fulfilling obviously. And, and, I, I get it's so great to hear from like kids what they're getting out of the program we run surveys and we see that like you speaking to those kids for example like they leave with new tools to manage the next challenge they face right which right. is really what we want and yeah 
so yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And obviously I've learned so much myself. So I legit said to you, I'm like, I hope I didn't scare them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Truthfully, they're probably happy to hear like some real talk because yeah. I think often, like you said earlier, like you just see these videos of Olympians and nationals and athletes, right? And it's like, cool. They're amazing. They're superstars. But like, you don't always get to know like what it took to get there. And yeah. often it's a lot of hard, hard, tough stuff. And so I yeah, think it's good. Sure. Yeah, you definitely. Okay, so how, how can uh, people book with Head to Head? The best way would be to just go to um, either our website, which is just headtohead.ca. Okay. And there's like a contact page there and it's got my email. Um, or on social, we're at underscore head to head. Awesome. And yeah, we build all sorts of programs. So I definitely encourage people to reach out. Me too. I want to talk to more people. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Martha, where can people find you online? Um, my Instagram is at MarthMCC. And I think my Twitter is the same. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, thank That's you cool. so much for dropping in today and the big ask and drop in to be my co-host for series four of dropping in. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited. It'll be fun. <laughs> Game on. Thanks so much for dropping in. You can find all the dropping in episodes on the Dean Blundell Network or on your preferred podcast network where you can subscribe and not miss an episode. 